This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello and welcome to another episode of Six Figure Dog Business. I am your host, Ty Brown of TyTheDogGuy.com. Welcome to Pet Life Radio. Today I've got an exciting show for you. Uh, I'm going to be interviewing myself. You're welcome. You're going to love it. But I'm going to share with you today how, uh, as a dog training company, we're able to sell six figures every month of just dog training and how I'm able to do it all myself on the phone. Yeah, pretty unique, pretty interesting. I'm going to share exactly how we do it, so stay right with us. We'll be right back. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Pick up two bottles of Licker Chops, get the third bottle free. New improved Licker Chops with omega-6, omega-3, vitamin E, and now six extra direct-fed microbials. Even better for the digestive tract and immune system. And dogs love it. Try Lico Chops. Buy two, get one free. This is Henry Lukasevic for Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, guys, so I've been debating how to do this episode. Because on the one hand, I don't want it to sound braggy. Braggy, because like there's a difference between braggy and like proud of an accomplishment, right? Braggy is kind of like this annoying, know-it-all, self-righteous. I feel like I'm describing myself. Just kidding. But, you know, there's that bragginess that, that nobody likes. Whereas, you know, proud of an accomplishment is something entirely different. So, so like I said, I want to talk today about how... I feel we're doing something pretty unique in the dog training business. And I'm going to share it because, you know, I think the more businesses grow, the more it helps everybody. I really do. It's not like I'm looking for a ton of businesses in my local area to grow. But overall, what happens is as dog training companies do well, the whole culture around dog training shifts. And what I mean by that is we've got TV shows like Caesar Milan and Victoria Stilwell. And you might love them, you might hate them, but what you can't deny is that they've shifted the dog training landscape. Not just them, but them along with other dog, you know, TV shows about dog trainers. They've shifted the landscape because what they've done is culturally they've made it acceptable and desirable to go after dog training, you know, to get dog training for your dog. And they've made that like a thing. And so now, oh, you've got a dog, you go get a trainer. That's like a thing you do. And it's not like it wasn't a thing before, but before these TV shows, it was less prevalent. And these TV shows kind of pushed the needle up. So what I'm getting at is, is the more that our businesses grow and the more that our businesses do well and the more that we highlight good things that are happening, it helps everybody because it continues shifting that culture. The next part of the dog training culture that I think is shifting right now and will continue to shift is the notion around paying big money for dog training. Back when I got started in training, it was the mid-90s, and I worked for a dog trainer, so I didn't see all the the business aspect ends. I still remember, you know, we did a lot of group classes and private training. The private training, I want to say the guy charged, the guy I worked for charged 30 bucks, 40 bucks per session or something like that. You know, doing a handful of sessions with somebody and the group sessions, I actually don't remember, 50 bucks, 75 bucks, something like that. And so, you know, granted now this is 20, over 20 years ago. And so those numbers would be different. But back then selling big ticket training, was done, but very little. Like culturally, it wasn't like this acceptable thing. In many places 20 years ago, and still today, but like in more places 20 years ago, dogs were still in the backyard. They weren't a part of the family. They lived outside and and stuff like that. And so anyways, long, long explanation for what I'm trying to get at is that culturally it shifts. And so the more that dog training companies are doing well, the more it's going to benefit me. And so that's one reason why I share this stuff. The other reason is I can teach people how to do this and make money. So if you're a dog trainer that wants to make more money, I can help you do that in exchange for money. Head over to tiethedogguy.com and go search under resources. Anyways, um, there's something there for dog trainers. There's a webinar that I've got, and you can learn how you can add $20,000 to your business. And maybe we can even end up working together at some point. 
But those are the reasons I share it. I think it benefits me. <laughs> and so, but I also think it benefits dogs. And I also think it's great when, uh, when people learn stuff, um, because this is all stuff that I've had to learn and I'm grateful for people that have taught it to me. But what I wanted to share today is how we as a company have evolved to the point to where we're doing over a hundred thousand dollars a month in just training. So I can say I'm proud of that. I am. There are very few dog training companies that do six figures every month in dog training. It doesn't make us a huge business by any means in, in the national landscape of businesses. You know, you know, a seven figure business is not like this huge business. But as far as dog training businesses go, we're few and far between. There's not that many of us that that are doing six figures a month. And so, so I'm proud of that fact that we as a team have been able to do that. And I'm also proud of the fact on how we're doing it. I'm doing all the sales. And so this is where I think that we are maybe even one of a kind. And forgive me if I sound a little bit braggy, but I believe we're one of a kind in that the dog training companies that are doing, you know, that are seven figure businesses, you know, are going to have anywhere between four and five and maybe 10 and 12 dog trainers, maybe more. And all of those, or most, if not all of those trainers are going to be involved in the sales process and they're going to be the ones doing the selling. And so you've got eight salespeople out there or whatever it is, five salespeople, six salespeople, which we've done that before too. But I'm proud of the fact that we are, you know, six figures every month. I'm doing all of the sales and not only am I doing all of the sales, but I'm doing them from the phone. And so we as a family travel a lot. In the past two years, we've been... We've been to Europe four times. We've been to Costa Rica. We've been to Cuba. Um, we've been all over the United States. We've been, you know, we visited the Southeast and we've been over to the West. And, and I can do that because anywhere that I've got a phone line, I can do that. Don't go to Cuba if you need a phone line, by the way. I found out, like, phones don't work there. You know, I've, I've gone all over Latin America. I was in Honduras two weeks ago. And um, no, not two weeks, four weeks ago. And I was making sales calls, you know, while in Honduras, in one of the poorest places on earth, it was actually quite eye-opening. You know, here I am, uh, it was right before Christmas, and I was, I remember one evening after working with this organization and, and really working with some folks in poverty, I sold like $5,000 worth of training that night and thinking, oh my gosh, like that village that I just went to isn't going to make $5,000 this whole year, like the whole village. And so anyways, I'm getting off on a tangent here, but because I'm able to sell from the phone, I can live where I need to live. We can travel. It allows me to do cool things like go to Honduras for a week and help out with an organization or go to Belgium like we did for a couple of weeks as a family or go to Portugal as a family or go to a conference in Vegas or whatever. You know, it allows me to do these types of things because I'm selling from the phone. And not only that, it allows me to provide a great living for our trainers. Almost all of our trainers are doing six figures in income every year or are on a six figure pace rather. And they don't have to sell. They don't, you know, they just train and their lives can be fun. So I'm pretty proud of that because I don't think any other company is doing the kind of volume we are where it's all sold by one guy over the phone. I don't think so. And so I wanted to share with you how we've done that because you may or may not want to do what I'm doing. You might want to do something completely different. But the reason I'm able to do it and that we as a team, as a company are able to do this is because of setting up a system that allows you to have to scale up a business as much as your local area will allow. We're not even at the, you know, where we could be. I think we could add, oh, another half a million, maybe another million in training if I had the trainers for it. And so we're trying to figure out how to get more trainers and stuff like that. But Anyways, there's a process to this and I want to share this process and because like I say, whether or not you ever want to do anything even close to what I'm doing or something entirely different, the process that I use can help you do exactly what I've done or the process that I use can help you do it your way because it's the process and, and if you build that process, you can build on top of that process however you want it to look. So I am seeing, I wrote down notes, I wrote down six things. Now, Six things that are going to help us get to this type of business. Six, six figures a month in sales all over the phone by one guy. So six things. Number one, it starts with your offer. I can't, I can't emphasize this enough. And this is where I think a lot of dog trainers are going wrong is they don't have a great offer. And you might say, okay, what is a great offer? A great offer is a lot of things, but more than anything, it's clear and specific and it's compelling. And so when I say an offer is, is essentially an offer is the answer to the question, what do you do? 
And if you say, you know, if I was to ask you, what do you do for a living? And your response was, I train dogs. That's not a very good offer. <laughs> and it's not a very good offer because there's thousands of people that train dogs. So why, why should they use you? So really, what is your offer? What's different and what's unique about you? And how clear and how specific are you? You know, we help people get complete transformation of their dogs in 60 days or less, including helping them overcome aggression problems, anxiety problems, manners problems, obedience problems, and more. And so now there's more to it than that, but I'm just giving you a brief glimpse into what our offer is. It's specific in that it's 60 days or less. It's specific in exactly what we're helping them accomplish. It's specific in we help dog owners. And in our marketing, we get even more specific. We don't help dog owners. We help dog owners who are willing to put in an effort. You know, we don't help dog owners. We help dog owners that are willing to sacrifice and really put in time and money. Um, We don't help dogs. We help, you know, dogs that, uh, that have owners that are willing to see change. And so we're very specific and clear in our marketing about who we're trying to talk to what we're doing to solve their problems and how we do it. That's compelling. And you compare that with what most people are selling. And most dog trainers are selling six sessions of dog training or four sessions four sessions of dog training or a six-week group class or a two-week board and train or something along those lines. That's what dog trainers are selling, but there's nothing clear, compelling, and specific about any of that. And yet that's all that people are talking about when they're trying to sell. You know, when they're trying to sell, they're just, they're telling you about, well, you've got this problem. Let me give you five sessions. You've got this problem. Let me give you two weeks. You've got this problem. Let me give you six group classes. That's not what people care about. It's not clear and specific. It's not compelling. So what is your offer? Think about this. Take weeks to think about this. It took me years to figure out our offer because I was going at this alone and trying to figure this out. But, and it took me forever to even figure it out. And now that I do, I'm embarrassed that it took me years because it's so simple here's what we do. Here's the problem we solve for a certain type of person. That's our offer. And we make it as clear as possible. And the more clear I make it in my sales process, the easier it becomes to sell. And it's so easy. And this is important because selling over the phone is a lot harder than selling in person. And so if your offer is crystal clear and it's it's easy to understand and it's compelling, we're good. And it becomes so easy to sell. I believe, and I actually don't track my numbers like I should, but I think I'm selling now better on the phone than I ever did in person, you know, at higher rates for higher ticket amounts, never meeting these people, selling them while I'm in Belgium, selling them while I'm in, in Georgia, selling them while I'm in New York, selling them while I'm all over the world because my offer is clear, compelling, and specific. So is yours? It's a good question to ask yourself. All right. Number two, only sell high ticket. And when I say high ticket, you know, it's different for every trainer. It's different for every market. It's different for everything that you do. But when I sell high tickets, so for example, when I'm working with dog business owners and we're trying to increase their business, I try to get them to have three programs. Now, some people have more, some people have less, but I try to get them to have three. You know, their main private session one, that's anywhere between $1,000 to $2,000. So this is a private session program in $1,000 to $2,000 where when the math works out, you're getting two to $300 per hour working with the client or per session. That's your core of your private training. If you do board and trains, that you have one board and train that's somewhere between two to 3,500, somewhere in there, that has good margins on it, and maybe a smaller one that's maybe six to eight hundred dollars, somewhere in there. And so that to me is high ticket. To other people, maybe it's not, or to other people, maybe it's huge ticket. But high ticket to me is a one thousand to two thousand dollar core program, a two to three thousand dollar, two to thirty five hundred dollar board and train. And one that's maybe six to eight hundred dollars, maybe. That's what we have. So we have a sixteen hundred dollar, a three thousand dollar, and a seven hundred and fifty dollar. The seven hundred fifty dollar we sell maybe one a month, maybe. You know, we might have ten people a year take that one. Everybody takes either the sixteen hundred dollar or the three thousand dollar. That's what everyone buys. And so for me, that's selling high ticket. Now, why do I do that? You know, why do I not offer smaller stuff and try to just do more volume or whatever? Low ticket doesn't help like you think it does. I've met so many dog trainers that say, I want to be accessible to everybody, so I, I, I have cheaper cheaper rates. It doesn't help like you think it does. It's not like you're doing a service to people by offering cheap training because you can't take care of yourself very well. You can't grow the company doing cheap training. You can only grow as far as you can grow. And maybe that's your goal, but 
still, it doesn't allow you to hire an assistant. It doesn't allow you to, you know, get a little bit of help here or there. It doesn't allow you to take care of yourself and, you know, treat yourself like an actual human rather than a, a robot that's working like crazy for low money. So it doesn't help like you think because you can't take care of yourself and your business really well if you're selling low ticket. So it doesn't help there. And low ticket isn't transformative. You know, nobody ever... I shouldn't say ever. Talking in absolutes isn't always the best way to go. But people rarely are dishing out $300 for five private sessions of dog training thinking this is going to transform my life. Whereas people are looking at $1,700 or $2,500 or $3,000 or $4,000 as like, yes, this is going to be transformative. We're going to, we're going to do a lot here. Just by virtue of being a higher ticket amount, people take it more seriously and it's more transformative for them. And low ticket doesn't give you margins to invest in acquisition. I was talking about, you know, low ticket, you can't, uh, you can't take care of yourself. You can't take care of the business when you're selling low ticket. Even if you're doing low ticket and volume, meaning you, you've got, you sell a low amount, but you sell a lot of them, it still makes it very hard to invest in, in client acquisition. But, you know, when what I mean by that is advertising or content creation or stuff like that. It's very hard to invest in the things you need to invest in if your margins are small. And with low ticket, margins are always going to be small. You need bigger margins if you're going to invest in yourself, invest in your business. So number one, starts with your offer. Number two, that offer better be high ticket if you love dogs. I'm going to take a break right here. I've got four more concepts here, but I'm going to take a break. So stay with me. I've got some of the bigger ones, the more meat and potato ones coming on the way. DGP is an all natural formula proven to help aging pets with joint and mobility problems. It goes to work quickly, providing vital nutrients to the joints while reversing the effects of age. Some people see results in as little as seven days. Don't let your dog struggle another day. Call 800-521-0543 or visit dgpforpets.com and enter the code DOGGY, that's D-O-G-G-Y, for 25% off your first order and free shipping. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com All right, we're back. And we're talking about how my team and I have been able to get to a company that's now doing six figures a month in dog training where I do all the sales from the phone wherever I happen to be. So, number one, we talked about you have to have a killer offer that's clear and specific and compelling. And you can make it, the more clear you make it, the more specific you make it, the more compelling you make it, the easier it becomes to sell. And you can sell it on the phone or you can sell it in person. You can sell it in print. Like half of the people have read our sales letter and that's that's why they end up buying from us. Number two, sell high ticket so that you have enough margin to invest in customer acquisition so that you can take care of yourself, so that you can take care of your employees should you ever happen to have employees. Number three, have a good funnel that is designed around your sales process. So what's your sales process? What's it going to be? Are you going to sell on the phone? Are you going to sell in person? Are you going to sell in a letter? Believe it or not, I actually tried that once. Years ago, people would call in. This is when I first got my assistant or an assistant. She's since moved on years ago, but when would this have been? I want to say seven or eight years ago. So when I first got an assistant, I wanted to take myself out of the sales process at the time. And so I wrote this like 15 page sales letter and she, people would call in, she would get their information. She would mail it out. I actually sold a few that way, but it wasn't as, uh, anyways, it wasn't as great as it could have been. But what I'm getting at is how are you going to sell on the phone in person? Are they going to come to you? Are you going to go to them? The answer to that question is how you should design your sales funnel. And when I say a funnel, what I mean is people are going to enter, enter your universe meaning they're going to get a flyer, they're going to get a referral, they're going to come to your website, they're going to come to your landing page from some advertising that you're doing, whatever it is, they're going to enter your universe. So what do we do to funnel? Because a thousand people are going to enter your your universe and only X amount of those thousand people are going to be clients. And it's not going to be a thousand (laughs) or even close. You know, if a thousand people come to your website, you know, you're lucky to get a few of those to be clients. And so, so anyways, 
that's what a funnel is. A thousand people enter your universe. They now know about you. What's the next step? We have them take that step. And then what's the next step? We have them take that step. And what's the next step? We have them take that step. And so finally, you know, a certain degree of those people are now customers, clients. And so a funnel is a process that people go through that ideally a lot of it's automated so that it doesn't take you much time, but it's done in a way that's informative to the max that informs people exactly what it is you do, again, your offer, exactly what it is you do, the problem you solve, and why you are uniquely qualified to solve that problem. So let me give you some examples. Because I sell on the phone, what I do, I want something to happen before I talk to people on the phone. And this is why I've never, I don't put stickers on my car and why I don't do flyers and stuff like that is because by the time I get on the phone with somebody, I would rather they know a lot about us. In fact, our phone script is if people call us and they don't know much about us, we get their information. We email them stuff before we ever spend any time with them on the phone. And this is us. I know a lot of other companies do really good by getting people on the phone, you know, and doing something from there. But I don't want to talk to anybody unless they know something about me and my company and why we're different, why we're unique. And so that's me. So our funnel is people come to our website. They come to the page. I call it a money page where we talk about this transform your dog in 60 days program and here it's amazing. And so you want it. And then from there, <clears throat> they enter their information so that they can get the programs and pricing. So I tell them the pricing, but it's behind an opt-in meaning they put in their name, phone number, email, and then they get the pricing. Now they're in my funnel. So now they're on a sales page that outlines what's different. Here's the programs and here's the pricing and here, you know, here's how we're great, blah, blah, blah. And now they can, sign up to do a phone call with me. And so by the time they hop on the phone with me, ideally they know a lot about my company. Now, oftentimes they don't, Some, you know, not everyone reads very well or goes through the materials, but you know, I've taken them through this process where I've shown them all these things that are unique, shown them how we specifically solve problems uniquely in a way that our offer is better than everybody else's. And then we hop on the phone and, you know, I close a good amount of those people. Now that's a funnel. The working parts are you've got, or the moving parts, you got this website and you've got a page on that website and that page takes them to a sales page and that sales page takes them to a calendar page and the calendar page puts them on my calendar and all of this is done automated behind the scenes. Now, a lot of people enter their information and don't sign up for the calendar. So part of our funnel is we're trying to get more of those people. So we text those people and we say, Hey, you forgot to sign up on the calendar. Here's that calendar link. And then we text them again, and then we email them, and then we email them again forever and ever and ever and ever, trying to get them to take a spot on our calendar so that we can talk to them and that we could see if we're a good match or not a good match, because that's important too. So that's our funnel. There's lots of moving parts. A good portion of it is automated. Some of it is manual because we will reach out with a phone call or the office will reach out with a phone call and try to answer questions and with a text as well. So if it's a weekend, if somebody opts in for information and it's a weekend, there has been 10 or 12 touch points with my company a week in. Um, and you might say, that's a lot. You're going to bug them. No, because it's been 10 or 12 touch points. Maybe they've actually like cognizantly recognized three of them. There's so much information out there that, uh, and so much stuff out there vying for attention that my 12 touch points, even if they've seen all of them, they only realize that they've seen a couple of them because they're busy with so much other stuff. And then, like I say, we keep emailing forever and ever and ever and ever and ever until until they, they opt out of our list or whatever. So that's our funnel. It's complex in the sense that I'm really trying to pick up every single person as much as we possibly can to try to get them on the phone. And I do that because we've got seven trainers. And so we've got a lot of uh, available inventory of what we sell. We've got a lot of available time of our trainers. And so I want to make sure that every single lead gets as much possible attention to determine whether or not they're interested in our dog training or not. And that's how my funnel is designed. And it's designed to push people towards a phone call, phone call, phone call. Once you know, once you think this might be of interest to you. So it's all designed around getting somebody on the phone after they have learned something about us. Okay. So what's yours? Like I say, I know a lot of people who design a funnel that's much more basic. They really just want to get people on the phone because on the phone, they do a good job at getting people to come into their location. And from there, they do a good job of, of closing people, you know, and, and selling dog training. I know other people who they want to get them on the phone and have more of a sales conversation and then schedule a time to come out to come to them. 
Whatever it is, what is your process? What is your sales process? And how well do you stick to it? I see dog trainers all the time complaining like, oh, people contact me through Facebook and I'm tired of it. Okay, then set up, you know, what is your funnel then? What do you want them to do? Set something up so that when they contact you through Facebook, be like, cool, go here to learn more. And that's all you got to do. Or, hey, thanks for messaging me through Facebook. You know, let's hop on the phone and talk about your dog. Or whatever your funnel is, whatever, you know, whatever your sales process is, your funnel needs to push people towards that. Don't complain that people are reaching out to you the wrong way. Help them do it the right way. And that's what you need to do. So, again, what's your sales process? How can you set up a funnel around that to get people into that sales process so you can have as many as possible sales conversations or as many as you need, depending on how busy you want to be, sales conversations leading to, you know, sales being made. Number four, not only do you need to have a process to get people into that sales conversation, you need to have a process for that sales conversation. I've done a lot of sales training and I love it. This is my favorite part because here's what I... 100% believe about sales. I believe that everything good in this world started with a sale. Everything, everything. And I'm not even, I'm not being hyperbolic. I'm not being exaggerative. If that's even a word, everything started with a sale. You know, think about your marriage. It started with a sale. You know, your, your husband, if you're, uh, you know, if you have a husband or your wife, if you have a wife, let's say they were the ones that initiated contact, they had to sell you or you had to sell somebody on saying hi on spending some time together, on going on a date, on doing this or that or the other. So something huge in your life started with a sale and probably had dozens and dozens and dozens of sales in between that initial sale and the final sale, which is marriage. And then, of course, there's lots of sales once you are married, making sure that you stay married. (laughs) But we're in this constant state of selling, selling our benefit to our spouse. If you had a great pizza, there was a sales process that got it to you that somehow that pizza place entered your realm of consciousness and you went out and got it. If somebody has great dog training, there was a sales process. If somebody lost weight, there was a sales process. If somebody wrote a book, there was a sales pro- there was a sales process for everything. Somebody needed to be persuaded to do a good thing for themselves. And that's what sales is. Sales is not talking people into stuff. That's not sales. That's bullying. Sales isn't like browbeating. Sales isn't guilting. Sales isn't any of that garbage. Sales is a good salesperson recognizes the need that somebody has and is able to solve problems for that individual. If you can't solve problems, and this happens to me all the time, you know, probably two or three times a week, my language on the phone with somebody is like, it looks like we're probably not the right company for you. And they're not the right company because maybe they're not willing to use an e-collar where we need to use an e-collar. Or maybe, um, you know, they're too far away from us. Or maybe the price is too high for them, you know, based on where they are in their life and their income. And all of these things are fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But they're not right for us. And so the sales process is just as much about determining if somebody's wrong for you than it is determining if somebody's right for you. And every beautiful thing in this world has sales involved with it. So live it, love it have a process for it. Very few dog trainers, and I know this because I've trained many dog trainers, very few dog trainers have a process for taking somebody who's interested through a logical and emotional process that leads to a reasonable decision is let me give you my credit card so we can get started. Very few people have that. They wing it, they talk about it, you know, they talk about what they do and and they think they're selling, but gentle and humane and Ethical persuasion has rules to it, and it goes better certain ways than others. And so do you have a sales process? I probably should do a whole training on this. But anyways, if you don't have a sales process, get one. Number five, scale with traffic. All right, so look at what we've done here. We've got an amazing offer. It's high ticket. We've got a funnel that delivers people who are interested into our sales process We've got a sales process that does a very good job at turning those people into customers. What do we have right now? In the business world, we call that an ATM, an automated teller machine. It's a cash machine, right? Because we have a process that we can duplicate over and over and over and over and over, right? And if you don't, then you don't have a process. But if you've done these things, you have a process. So what is the next thing you need to do? Do more of it. You know, that's it. Get more people into that funnel. Get more people into into your universe where they know who you are and 
are wanting to work with you, ideally. So scale this with traffic. Do more SEO. And that's a big one for us. SEO is a big one. And so like I say, we're able to do over 100 grand a month. And SEO is a big reason based on stuff that I did 13 years ago with my website, 10 years ago with my website, eight years ago with my website. Be producing content. Be putting great stuff up on your website, stuff like that. Referral stuff. Now, one reason we're able to do this now, whereas even if I had all my ducks in a row, I don't think we would have been there five years ago, is we've been in business now for 12, 13 years. We have trained thousands of dogs. And so there's thousands of happy people that are now referring us. Not everybody's happy, unfortunately, but most of our clients are. And so we get so many referrals now. Now, so not every person that I'm talking to right now on this podcast can do that. Not everyone can just, you know, is getting tons of referrals and not everyone can. It's not like you can do SEO tomorrow and get clients. And so paid traffic. Have you mastered paid traffic? It took me a decade in my business to where I actually even thought about it. Because my first decade, I got the business or we got the business up to about a half a million dollars before I ever spent a dollar on ads. I was able to do it all. We were able to do it all organically. But because I got in SEO when nobody else was doing it and I've been making people happy for a long, long time. So we've always had SEO and referrals going for us and we didn't need paid traffic. But as we wanted to grow or if I was in the position of many people now who are just starting or within the last few years have just started, paid traffic is here to stay and this is how you are going to grow your business. SEO is a different beast these days. You can't rely on it the same way that I did for years. And so have you learned how to do paid traffic? So paid traffic for us is great. And so some people might be like skeptics and saying, ah, you did 130 grand last month. Well, how much did you spend in ads? Ha ha ha. We're actually to the point now where we're spending about a thousand to $1,500 a month. That's it to get this level of revenue. That's it. Just, uh, two years ago, I was spending five to $6,000 a month and we were doing maybe $80,000 a month in revenue. Uh, you know, depending, sometimes we're more, sometimes we're less, but we're four to $6,000 a month in, in spend. So how have I been able to come down come down in ad spend while also going up in revenue? Because I've got a lot better at using ads to put people into my funnel. That's the simple answer. Now we can help you with that. Like I've got people, like if you want us to run your traffic, we can do that for you. But uh, how good are you at paid traffic? Like I say, with a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, we're getting huge returns because for us, a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars means, well, let's say fifteen hundred dollars. That probably means one hundred and fifty leads, which probably means oh, about twenty clients. So that paid traffic, our clients are worth just over two thousand dollars a piece. So that paid traffic is worth about fifty thousand dollars a month to us, roughly give or take. Would you spend $1,500 to make 50,000? I don't know anybody who wouldn't. Learn paid traffic. And if not, get somebody to do it for you. Now, number six, before I finish here is fulfill, fulfill, fulfill. Do your absolute best at fulfilling every promise you make. Make, you know, whether you're training or your trainers are training, do your absolute best to make these people happy, ecstatic, great results, all that good stuff, because none of this works if you're just selling a crap product. You know, if your training is no good and your follow-up is no good and you're not, you're not a good, anyways, none of it works that way. So anyways, those are the six steps. I've gone longer than I normally do. Hopefully this is okay. But number one, have a great offer. Number two, sell high ticket. Number three, have a funnel that's designed around your sales process. Number four, have a sales process for closing your sale. Number five, once you've got all that, scale it up with more traffic. Number six, fulfill, 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 make people happy, serve them, love your customers, love your clients, and then repeat, rinse and repeat over and over and over, getting bigger and bigger and bigger, or not staying where you want to be and and designing a business around you. That to me has been the biggest thing, folks. I now, for the first time, I have a business that I feel really works around me, and it's not perfect. There's still things I'm always trying to fix, and I, you know, I still have bad days or whatever, but I'm so much happier with my business now because I figure this stuff out. I'm a knucklehead. It takes me a good solid 12, 13 years to figure stuff out. Hopefully 12, 13 years from now, I'll be in even better position. So if you have any questions, so make sure you head over to petliferadio.com so you can listen to all of the episodes of all the shows there. There's tons there. Listen to all of mine, Six Figure Dog Business. If you need my help with something and you're willing to pay for it, (laughs) uh, I had to put that in there. Get over to us at tiethedogguide.com. We'd love to be of service. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand.
only on PetLifeRadio.com.